Let's move on to objects as points. The method is going to be called center net. This one is also anchor free. It's about key point estimation, which is a per pixel prediction task. Again, you're reframing the object detection as key point estimation, pose estimation. And then as soon as you know and are able to reframe your problem this way, you're going to be able to solve other problems as well. One of them is going to be detection. You are going to be able to do 3D detection, actually, 2D and 3D detections. You are going to be able to say the orientation and the pose of the objects. So it's about detecting centers rather than detecting corners. Once you detect it centers, you are going to be able to say, this is the size of my box. You are going to be able to offset to correct the location. You are going to be able to do 3D detection which is about putting bounding boxes around 3D objects. And actually, if we have time, we are gonna go through 3D data, the type of LiDAR data that you see on the right. This is the bird eye view coming out of LiDAR data, laser scanners. The task here is, first of all, you need to detect the box in 2D, then you're gonna extend it in 3D, and then at the same time, you need to know the orientation, which is gonna be an angle. If you go to polar coordinate, you're going to be able to predict the angle of this box in 3D. And if you have time, we're going to do one 3D detection using LiDAR data later on. This is doing 3D detection using images. Or you can do pose estimation. Okay, perfect. Key point estimation. You have an image. You push it through your convolutional neural network. And then you are going to do a prediction. It's per pixel prediction, but after a bunch of convolution, you're gonna lose some resolution based on your total stride. You are gonna have a number of key points or key point types. For instance, if you're doing uh, object detection and if you're doing Pascal VOC, C is gonna be 20 or AD for Microsoft Cocoa. Or if you're doing pose estimation, you're gonna have 17 poses, left shoulder, right shoulder, and the other joints in somebody's body. You know the, so how do you interpret this prediction? Whenever it is close to one, you know that that pixel is gonna correspond to a detected key point and which detected key point, what class does it belong to? It's whenever, where you have your C. That's gonna be the type of the key point. And otherwise it's gonna be zero. In your ground truth, you're gonna know these locations. For instance, you're gonna know the locations of the centers of your boxes. These are 2D variables out of adjusting the resolution, you are going to end up with a low resolution equivalent of P. And then you are going to put a Gaussian kernel on top of that. This is one hot encoded. Now you're going to smooth this out using the Gaussian distribution. And this is your ground truth. And depending on sigma is a hyperparameter. It's going to tell you how much are you smoothing, how relaxed are you, or how strict are you. That's going to give you a ground truth heat map. And now you need to regress Y hat to Y. But there is a catch. There could be multiple people or multiple objects within a scene. Therefore, you're going to end up with multiple Gaussians. And whenever they overlap, you pick the maximum. You look at the point. There could be multiple Gaussians that are going through that. You pick the maximum of the two. That's going to give you the ground truth label. And we did that before also when we were doing pose estimation. So nothing new yet. The loss function is also not new. It's the same adjustment to focal loss that we saw when we were doing uh, corners, when we we're detecting corners. It's the same thing here, so no changes. The offset, you're going to need the offset again. Why is that? Because whenever you downsample from one resolution to another resolution, you're collapsing multiple input pixels to only a single pixel at that particular layer. If you want to go back, you need to know which pixel is that. You need to offset your pixel. And this is exactly what you're doing here. You're predicting the offset and you know the ground truth for it, which is if you take the exact P over R and its quantized version, subtract them, that's going to be how much you need to offset that point to correct for the fact that you lost some resolution. Now you're going to treat object as points. How? You have your bounding box for the case objects. It's going to have a category, CK. For the case objects in your image is, for instance, this uh, person. To find the center, 
you're going to average out the x coordinates and the y coordinates of the top left and bottom right corner. That's going to give you the center. This is the ground truth center. Now, this p is exactly what you're going to use here to give you the key points that you want to estimate. And therefore, you're finding your centers by solving a regression problem, by solving this loss function. What else do you need? You need to know the width and the height of this box. You know the corresponding ground truth. You need to have a network head that's going to output the corresponding prediction of your model for the sizes. And then you're going to use that signal to supervise this size prediction network. So now you're predicting the size. And your loss function is going to be a weighted average of all of, all of these loss functions. One of them is offsetting your prediction. The other one is adjusting the losses. And the other one is doing the key point detection. This one is finding the centers. This one is finding these arrows. And the other one is offsetting the location. So your network is going to output in total C outputs because you have C key points. Uh, this O is two-dimensional. Your offsets, it's a vector. And these sizes are also two-dimensional. This is the first dimension. This is the second dimension. And you can put bounding boxes around your object this way. And now you can see how you can extend this to other tasks. You can extend this to pose estimation, and you can extend this to 3D detection. The only thing that's going to change is you need to know the orientation, which you know from your ground truth. And then what else? You know this size here, and then you know how far you need to go in the Z direction. And then you can do 3D detection for self-driving cars. Because this is important, you need to know if you want to cut in front of another car, you need to know where that car ends. Any questions about objects as points? Center net. Was everything clear? Okay, perfect.